So when we're looking at the crop settings of the machine, we can go in via this menu. What this is going to enable us to do is, for the machine itself, is to load some crop settings dependent on the crop we're cutting. So for example, if I was going into a crop of barley, I can click at the top here, my crop selection. I can select the barley I would like to cut, so let's say spring barley. And then the Cebus menu is going to preload some settings of which it thinks is right for the machine. All I have to do is make sure that my machine's threshing is enabled and ensure that I'm at the high revs. I can then press the play button and it's going to automatically load in these settings to the machine. Additionally, if I then find that I want to tweak some of these settings, so for example, my threshing drum speed is 750 RPM. However, I find that 700 is more fitting for barley. What I can do is tweak the speed down to 700 RPM through the main threshing selection. I can then go into my crop settings and I'll be able to save my own crop selection settings. So for example, I could click and save it as spring barley 2021. And then all I have to do is then when I load in my next time for my data, I will see the unalterable crop data that comes from factory, but I will also see here at the top own crop data and my selected crop. It is important to save your own crop when looking at quantum meter and moisture meter calibration. If I want to adjust any of my own crop settings, I can click along the top here and I can rename any of my available crops that I have available to me. I can also go in and delete any of my crop data as well. However, that the factory settings, the unalterable crop data will always remain in the system. You can see here the wide variety of crops we have available and settings that are available from the Cebus. The one setting that you will see is different is the cleaning by blowing setting. This is different to any of the other crop settings we have available. And the way this works is if I load cleaning by blowing, and play this as my freshing system to load the settings into my machine system. What this will do is open up all of my gaps, be that my concave gap, my sieve gaps, and also run up the likes of my freshing drum and my fans, so that if I'm changing crops from one crop to another, it will clear my system out internally. So it will clean it out, and also it will clean it out of any debris or chaff that I may have left in the system. It's a nice little feature that we can offer if you're at the end of the day and you're changing fields or changing crops and you want to give the internals of the machine a quick clean. So we've just seen how to load in the crop data to the machine. Going down the page, we can see all the adjustments that that crop data has made to my machine itself. So for example, I can see all of my lower and upper sieve adjustments that the crop may have changed. At the bottom of the screen, I can also select some favorites. So if I have a crop that I may be transferring between a lot of, or if I want to load in my cleaning by blowing as a favorite, I can select one, two, or three, favorites one, two, three, select the menu, and then select the crop I want to load. So let's say, for example, spring barley. I can then, from my main screen, select my quick favorite. So the button at the top here next to that of the camera menu, I can select and I can select the crop quickly that I want to load in. Going back to the main crop menu now, we've had a look at the actual crop data and the settings that can be loaded from the Cebus menu itself. Our moisture setting can access here. The way the moisture setting works is that the machine has a moisture meter fitted to that of the clean grain elevator. This will be then read out as a moisture recommendation down on the bottom hand graph. If I find that my moisture meter is incorrect, or I think is incorrect, I can then take that of a handheld meter and do a manual adjustment or a manual field test using one of my handheld adjustment meters. If I then find that my handheld moisture meter is offset to that of my normal moisture meter on the combine, so for example, if my combine is reading 15%, but my actual handheld moisture meter is reading 16%, then I need to put in an offset of 1% on my system. This then ensures that my combine is correct when reading moisture recommendations. If I'm also storing my crop at a silo or a shed, I can also select 
a storage moisture depending on the amount my grain has been dried. So if I have a drying system in my shed, which is drying the crop to a set 14%, I can turn this system on, select the percentage it's being dried to, and this will then offset the likes of my yield data inside my SIBA screen and that of my telematics data. The same also goes when I'm correcting my moisture meter measurement. If I've offset my moisture meter measurement here, that will then backlog all the moisture meter measurements that I had on my previous telematics data. The quantum meter, which we've already had a look at, is located at the top of the machine inside the grain tank underneath that protective panelling. The quantum meter doesn't require any calibration manually, however, it does require calibration from inside the Cebus menu. Now, because of our new quantum meter system, we don't have to manually input our litre hectare weight. The system itself is pre calibrated. If we want to make the calibration, all we have to do is turn the test away system on, cut a quantity of crop, so for example, cut a full tank's worth of crop. The amount that the tank then thinks it has fitted will be displayed here. So for example, it will display 10, 12 tons maybe. I will then turn my test weighing system off and I will unload my grain tank into a trailer. Ton, so I can... Once my trailer driver then goes away and weighs the remainder of his trailer, he will then report back to me as the operator how much weight he actually had. So then if, for example, he had the likes of 11 ton inside of his trailer, I can click on the icon and select 11 tons. I would then click the likes of the green button, making sure that the top here is displayed as 11 tons. I will then click the green tick button and that setting has then been saved. Below, I can also see my calibration factor. This factor will then be set from that of my quantum meter test weight you will then see this quantum meter factor or calibration factor adjust accordingly. If I also know my crop specific settings already, I can enter them here. One thing we do need to make sure is that before we do our test weight, we also make sure our moisture setting is correct. Finally, for my quantum meter system, I also have a zeroing or a learning process for this. So I need to ensure that my quantum meter is correct by running my freshing system up, but making sure that I'm not taking any crop into my machine. So I need to have an empty machine, but the freshing system is enabled. I would then run my quantum meter measuring or my learning process, and that will then make the quantum meter system itself learn or know the zero value of what is coming through the machine. Again, if I find that my calibration or my quantum meter data is off, or I find I'm having some issues with it, then the first thing I want to check is that my quantum meter zero point has been recently relearned. Again, if you don't know what this... No. Again, if you don't know what this learning procedure entails, I can press and hold on the learning procedure, and I will then be given a list of how the procedure is worked. 